Hello everybody and welcome to another little video with Crafty Cow and I'm delighted to say this is my 100th video. <laughs> Amazing, I can't believe it. Uh, I've made so many so far. And what did I want to talk about today? Well, I wanted to talk about this stuff. This is vellum um, and we get from Stamping Up, because I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator from Northern Ireland, we have a whole pack of the vellum card stock that we um, can get from Stamping Up, which is wonderful. And it's beautiful stuff, vellum, and there are so many things you can do with it. So today I wanted to talk about five different ways you can use vellum and um, just show you just some things to do with it and some, some ways to play with it. So the first one I want to show you, um, I think I'll get a dark dark piece of card just to show you. So it hopefully shows up against that dark background. And what I've done with this piece of vellum is I've actually used one of our embossing folders, the old splattered folder actually in this case, um, and run the vellum through our embossing, cut and emboss machine to emboss it. And as you can see, it's Hopefully this, uh, where are we there? Um, hopefully you can see, um, <laughs> hopefully it'll give you a bit of focus. You can see it's got a lovely pattern on it. This, in this case, a very random pattern. And you can use that as a background for cards. So that is the first way and probably the most common way I use vellum. I love it as a background. So here are two cards I've made like that. Again, in the same way, this is the first one. Um, and these, um, I showed these online in a post uh, last Tuesday um, as part of the Tech for Stampers blog hop. But this one uses the time-worn type embossing folder. And I've just cut out this vellum with one of our decal edged rectangle dies. So it's an uneven rectangle. Then I've trimmed it using scissors following the dotted lines of the die, um, which are difficult to see, but they are there. You probably can't see them too well. I'm trying to get this to focus, but it's not not really focusing on it. Anyway, um, just use that piece of vellum as a background there and then just used um, a cutout circle, die cut circle with stylish shapes, stamped my sentiment and put a few little leaves that I've punched with the bow punch um, around the edge just to, to sort of liven it up really. So that is a nice, very simple way of using vellum. And you can either cut it straight or cut it re uh, regularly. You can tear vellum and that actually looks really good as a background as well. Or you can actually use it and put a frame around it. So in my other card that I made for the blog hop, you can see here I've used the um, one of the basic embossing folder sets. There's a set of three basic embossing folders and this cross hatched pattern is one of those um, embossing folders. So I embossed the vellum with that embossing folder, put it on a base of peak and pie this time and I used the scallop contour die to cut out um, a frame in basic white and then I cut out the centre of it um, just using my trimmer, um, leaving a one centimetre border all the way around, uh, which is easy to do on our trimmers to measure that. And that formed a, a frame that I stuck on top of my vellum. And then again, I did some punched uh, bow punches bits uh, to stick on and use um, as the decoration there. So that's one way to use it. And I could use this one in the same way. I could put this um, on a background of card to make a card with, and I will do that. But I wanted to show you one additional technique you can do. So as well as just um, simply embossing it, you can use the, this is actually the stylus from the scorer, from our um, scoreboard, this thing, it comes with the scoreboard. Um, and it's got these rounded, um, nobbles on the end which we use to score our card with when we're using the scoreboard but they can also be used to emboss and if you emboss vellum so i'm going to turn this over this is the raised side of the splatters this is the debossed side and i'm just going to color in some of these splatters with the end of my embossing folder and i actually i'm doing this just on the card but actually i'm better if i do it on something soft that's just it got a bit of a softer surface, so we'll probably see it. But yes, that's better. So all I'm doing, not uh, pressing too hard, but I'm just pressing with the end of the stylus to fill in some of these areas. I'm gonna, oh, I've chosen a big one there. <laughs> Let me choose a smaller one there. And I'm just using the stylus in these, just pressing into the debossed bit on the back of this. And then when I turn it round, just do one more. And do this one quite quickly. 
Don't press too hard or I'll go through the vellum. There we go. Can you see what that's done? It's actually given it a much whiter, you'll see it hopefully, bring it up. Can you see how the bits where I've used the embossing tool have just come up as much, much whiter? So I'm going to finish that and put it on a card and I will show you that. You'll be able to see the card I made with it in just a minute. And if I'm going to stick this down, and I am in a bit, um, then I just need to make sure that when I'm putting glue on, I'm going to use glue behind where I've embossed. Now those are raised from this side because I've done them from underneath. But if I put glue there, I know it's not going to be seen when it comes out. Whereas if I put glue anywhere else or tape, it shows through vellum. So be really careful. The other thing you could use, which is um, works really well, is our mini glue dots. Again, they do not show too much through vellum. So they're a really good option for sticking vellum down. But using tape or using um, Tombow all over is not going to work because you are going to see it from the other side, particularly tape. So mini glue dots, little dots of Tombow behind bits of the pattern where it's not going to show. So with this card, I'm actually going to make it fairly plain. I'm going to make the splattery effect, the sort of centerpiece. And I'm just going to have over here, I'm going to have um, a sentiment. So I'm going to show you that when it's finished. OK, so I've stuck this on and I wanted to show you um, most of the dots I've put on here. I've used glue dots and I've put them behind the embossed areas. But you can see if I don't, hopefully this is going to be in shot enough and you can see it. They do show through. So here's my little glue dots just placed on the corners. The rest are behind some of these raised bits. You can't see them so much. You can see those ones in the corners. So just be careful with that. It probably doesn't matter too much, but <laughs> it's something I don't particularly like, but I wanted to show you what that looked like. And then to finish the card, I've just um, embossed in white again, the thank you on black, put it on a white base. I'm thinking I probably should have used a vellum base, but hey, <laughs> we were not gonna change that now. And then I just need a couple of dimensionals behind that to stick it on and then continuing with my black and white theme I'm going to oops get rid of those bits they're sticking to me again they always do when I'm on video one of those strange things all right so I'm going to have it slightly over this way so not covering too much of my prettiness there and then to finish it off, I'm just going to, oops, not those, these. I'm just going to use some of our iridescent pearls, basic jewels, just in the corner here, just to add to it. So there's my very plain, but quite, it really brings out the vellum as a focal point for the card to see that. And um, yeah, I shall finish the inside at some point. So that's um, that was my second idea for embossing on vellum. Okay, so that was idea numbers one and two, to use an embossing folder and then to directly emboss a piece of vellum. And um, just while we're on that, uh, if I use this little scrap here, I can show you that you can actually just do that just with, I'll just use my bone folder actually as a quick ruler. You can actually do the same thing using the end, the thinner end of the um, tool to make a pattern on the vellum, just like that. So, so many things you can do, just so embossing with an embossing folder or using um, the tip of the paper scoreboard um, tool just to make um, either colour in areas or to draw lines or to draw patterns on vellum. The next way is to use another sort, yet another sort of embossing, um, using stamps. So I'm going to show you this. Now, if you're going to emboss, using embossing powder, and I'm going to use uh, gold embossing powder for this one, then you do need to use one of these, which is the little embossing buddy. And what this does, if you rub it all over the surface that you're going to emboss, it just takes away any of the oils from your fingers or dust or bits that might be on there that need to be cleaned off. So it's a nice, clean surface to do your embossing. And then to emboss, we always use the Versamark pad. Really important to do that. So you choose your image. In this case, I've used um, the two flowers, and I'm going to use the leaves too, from Irresistible Blooms, from that set, the Irresistible Blooms set. And I'm just going to ink up the image, the stamp, 
with Versa Mark, make sure it's covered and then press it down. Hold it for just a second or two because you really want the Versa Mark to sit into the vellum. And then I've just got room to fit the other one in here. So again, press it down. Those are the two flowers. So you can't really see them yet. You can perhaps just see the ink on the vellum there. So I get my embossing powder. Holly, my gold is getting quite low. I'm going to need to put some more in here, I think, but it'll do for now, it'll be enough. So I get my embossing powder and I always like to put my embossing powder into a Chinese carton as this is, um, just to try and keep it from getting all over my desk. It still usually does manage to get over the desk to some extent, but it does keep it more or less where I want it to be, which is not where it shouldn't be. There we go. So that is just the images covered in embossing powder. And now I'm going to uh, use my embossing, to, uh, my heat gun, just to heat that up and melt it, which I won't do on camera because it makes a horrible noise and you can't hear anything else. And a little hint, when you are using your heat gun on vellum, keep it moving. Don't try and focus it in an area because the vellum will warp. So to keep the vellum nice and straight, keep your heat gun moving around as you melt all of it. And you can also do it from underneath. And if your paper is beginning to warp slightly, if you do it from underneath, it'll just straighten it back up again so you don't get any problems. So there is my beautifully embossed now um, in, uh, irresistible blooms flowers but I don't want them just to stay like that because I can actually colour them. So those are done in gold. I'm going to just leave those to just um, cool down a bit before I do anything. These ones, and you perhaps can't see quite as well. So these ones I've done in white embossing powder um, and done exactly the same thing. Use my embossing buddy, stamp them in Versamark and then just use the white embossing powder. So you can see the difference there in the two. You've got the bright gold on one and you've got the um, white on the other. Okay, so I've let these um, cool and made sure they're completely cold. And I want to show you the next technique. And for this, I'm going to use some of our um, stamping inks, the um, very concentrated coloured inks that we use to re-ink our stamping pads. But there's also a lot you can do with ink. And I will at some point do a whole um, video on all the things you can do with ink as well. So I'm going to choose just three colours. I'm going to um, choose Poppy Parade, Daffodil Delight and Old Olive for the leaves, I think. There we go. And we only need a little bit and I'm using um, a stamping block for this. And then I'm going to use um, an aqua painter brush. And this is just a brush that has water on it. Um, and I'm going to just pick up a little bit of the colour and colour the leaves, but I'm not going to colour on the top. I'm going to turn these over so that I colour on the bottom. So let me start with the leaf and just show you. So I pick up a little bit of colour on the brush, don't need too much. And then I can just colour behind where the embossing is on the front and you'll see it'll come through and you can see the colour as it comes through. And we can add more colour and make it darker if we want. And I just need a piece of, some piece of absorbent paper. Um, and I just squeeze through the water until it comes out and there's no, um, no colour in it at all. The green has completely gone. So now I can change colours and I'll go with the yellow next and pick that up. And we'll make perhaps the smaller flower the yellow one and I'm just going to add some colour around the sort of edges and then I'm going to get some of that colour off and just use the water brush itself to spread the colour so I'm going to get a lighter effect a darker and a lighter effect when I turn this over and you see it so get rid of that colour and pick up the poppy parade and I'll do the same thing with this flower So I've now got one very, very messy bit of cloth, which can go in the bin. Um, 
leave those over there. I can wash those in a minute. Going to let this, ooh, <laughs> I was going to say, going to let this dry. You can use a heat gun just to dry it out quickly. So now when the magic happens and I turn this over, can you see how these, put them on my hand and hopefully bring them a bit closer so you can see. Can you see how these images have now been coloured by using the um, watercolour behind, watercolour technique behind? And I can now use my dies that come with this set to cut these out and make up a card, which I'll show you in just a second. So here is the um, card I'm making with these pieces that are now die cut that I coloured on the back just with watercolour, with the water paint and some ink. And these are the pieces I've got. This is the card I'm going to put them on. And I've already stamped this with other stamps from the Irresistible Blooms set. So I've used the Thank You and I've also used the Splattery Dots. I'd rather have a penchant for Splattery Dots on cards. I think they look lovely. So I'm going to stick these on, but I wanted to just talk about how you can um, stick on vellum because for a lot of vellum, the glue will show, and I'm going to show you with the, one of the other cards that I'm going to put together in a minute. So I thought, right, I'm going to show you what I do. And what I do is I try, if I put this against my desk, I can actually see through it where the white is, where the white embossing is. And if I just put some dots there, round where the white embossing is, and round the edge, Again, just following where the embossing bits are. There's one. Like that, little tiny dots of glue. I hope you can pick it up without showing. So tiny dots of glue all over the bit. And then I can just stick it on without dropping it. <laughs> and actually, I want to stick some leaves behind it. So let me not just stick it down fully just yet, because I do want to put a couple of leaves behind. In the same way, just using glue where the embossing is so that I'm not going to it's not going to show through too much so we'll have that one just underneath there there so I'm going to press that down and now you can't really see the glue through it whereas if I'd used glue all over it you can see smears you've got to be so so careful so I'm going to do the same with the other leaves because I want this one sitting roughly there and I'll have the other leaves coming out this side. So again, I'm just going to check where I can put the glue where it's not going to be seen so much. Around the white bits. And just stick that down there. And then this one I actually want to raise on dimensionals. So I'm going to use the little, oop, the little tiny, tiny mini dimensionals here. And again, I'm going to try and stick them I don't need too many of them because dimensionals are very sticky, but I'm going to try and stick these very much where um, there's quite a lot of white. So we're not actually going to see them too clearly through the actual flower. So I'm going to put three or four on here and that'll be enough to hold the flower. And I'll show you because you'll be able to see these a little bit through it. Not, not as well as just through plain vellum because the colour is there to stop it, but you can perhaps see the shadow where they are. It won't matter when it's on the card. You can't see them too much, but just be careful when you're gluing vellum. So there's my card made with my embossed and then watercolored flowers. And I think you'll agree, it's a lovely effect and really, really beautiful. So I hope you have a go at that because it's great fun to do. <laughs> Right, for my next idea, I'm, I'm actually going to use something a little bit different to colour. So I've got my blends here and I've got a cutout circle using the, using the stitched shapes dies. And I managed to say that without tripping over it, which is always good. And I need a little bit of scrap paper. Let me just get a piece from here. Sorry, it's covered in stuff. That doesn't matter. Um, so on the reverse of this, I'm going to colour and I'm actually going to use my um, stamping blends. I'll probably use the, the light one, the dark one. don't think it matters too much. I don't want too dark a colour. So we'll start with the light and see where it goes. And I think you can see that better against the, the bit of white on here. You can see it is quite pink. Obviously, it's not quite as pink the other side, which is the bit you can't see. I'm going to keep working on that and adding colour and I will be back to show you the card I make with it. OK, so I've got my, show it on there so you can see it a bit better. I've got my ring that's coloured now coloured pink. 
with our alcohol blends. So I've got here some bits I prepared earlier to go with the card. So I'm going to use, I've used the one of the characters from the Zany Zoo set that comes with dyes, which is lovely. And I want to stick it onto my circle. So what I'm going to do is actually stick that on my circle first using some dimensionals, which are sitting here. Excellent. So I'm just going to put a couple of dimensionals on there. And I'm going to stick into the circle first before I actually stick in, oh, get it on the right side. There we go. Before I stick it on the card, because again, I don't want the sticking bits to show. And if I try to put glue around my circle, it's going to show. So this time, because I know where I've stuck that, I can then use a little bit of Tombow or glue dots. I'm going to use some glue dots actually to show you those. So I can now use my glue dots. Ooh, they're all vanishing. There they are. Let's get rid of that strip. So I can pick up my glue dots and stick them behind the image so it's not going to show when I stick it to the card. So I can put several glue dots here. Stick. There we go. Because I'm not going to have any around the edge because they'd show. So I'm going to put quite a few on here. I've already prepared the rest of the card. So in fact, I'm going to stick that down onto my main card before I stick the, the decoration on. So these are just my normal layers that I'm using for my cards, which is that my base card, 21 by 14.8, scored at 10.5 and folded in half. My second layer in, this time the coloured layer, which is the lovely new, oh dear, I can't remember what it's called, the, the lemon one anyway, lemon burst, can't remember, um, but it, the lemon what the lemon colour. Um, and that one is 10 by 14.3 and my final white layer is 9.5 by 13.8. So then I can stick this on the centre, press it down through my image that's raised upon dimensionals and there we have it. So another way to use vellum, we haven't got anything that sort of colour and we have got card but I didn't want the bright pink. So using a little bit of pink on the vellum has really made the difference um, and allowed me to have a background to the card there. So that is my fourth idea with vellum. But the other paper we get, or we've had recently, was this one. And this was the 2001 to 2023 in colour shimmer vellum. So um, now no longer available. But if you have some around, it's already coloured. So I don't need to worry about colouring it. However, I can do something to make it look a lot better. And this is shimmery on one side. Uh, turn it over. So I've got two petal shapes cut out, two sets of petals if you like, just cut out, and some bows and centres from other punches and things I've had lying around. But I wanted to show you um, another way of using um, ink pads. So I've got ink pads here to match these. I've got Lost Lagoon, to, which will vaguely match this green, which is, um, I think this was, what was it called? Not Evening Evergreen, the other green. I can't remember what it's called now. I think it's that, but Lost Lagoon actually... Um, does go quite well with it. I've got crushed curry to match with my yellowy colour and I've got um, melon mambo for my pinks. And I'm going to use my blending brushes. So what I've done is I've turned these over. I haven't turned those over yet, but I'm going to just <laughs> I'll show you on these petals. So I've cut out some petals and you could use the lovely um, paper flower bundle. You could use all sorts of things. But get yourself some petals and things and then just load up one of the little mini bush, um, brushes, which are by far the best for this, because you're going to just colour around the edges. So that's why I've got it sitting on paper. And all I'm going to do is just add a bit more colour round the edges of each of these using my blending brush. So round each petal, round the outside of it. I'm just, ooh, see, I've got ink all over here now, so it doesn't matter. Just round the edge. I'm just adding a bit of depth of colour. Okay. Ooh, quite a lot around that one. That's okay. It'll dry. <laughs> and remember, this is the reverse. I want it quite, quite bright because when I turn it over, I'm going to lose some of that as it comes through the vellum. So 
just do that on each so you get the idea making a complete mess which is why i need to have the paper underneath you can do the same with these ones i'm going to have the ends of the petals just darker and remember you can clean your your brushes really easily just by running them under the tap for a bit and then allowing them to air dry so I'm not too worried that I'm getting these brushes really filthy and really heavily covered because it doesn't matter. I can just wash them and leave it to dry. What it does mean is I tend to keep brushes for particular reasons. So I'm going to keep this one to use for reds and pinks. Uh, I'll keep the one I use next for yellows and I'll keep the one I use after that for um, greens and blues. Greens and blues quite good to use together. So there I've started with these. Um, I'm going to do exactly the same for the flower centres. Well, I've got three. Well, I've only got two flowers. I'm not sure, but obviously I got carried away. I'm going to do a little similar thing with the leaves, just colouring some of the bits of the leaves, not all the leaves. Um, and then I'm going to put them together as flowers and I shall be coming back to show you what that looks like. Now I thought I'd just, now I've finished doing all of that blending, I'm just going to show you how I put the flower back together again because I'm using a tiny bit of vellum and using it to stick the ends of the petals into so that I can then form my flower around there. Oops. I can add more um, glue when I need. So I can overlap them in the middle here. And it just gives me a little base that I can use to bring these together because if I was trying to stick these points together it really would be very difficult. There we go. I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'll shape it and stick it to my card. And I'm going to do exactly the same with this one on another little piece of vellum but not quite such a long piece because I realise it's going to show otherwise and when I've done that um, I shall be back to show you my finished card okay so my car, uh, my flowers have now dried and I've shaped them simply by using my palm and using um, something large and round I actually have um, a big big ball that I use just to shape the flower using my palm and pressing that in and that just gives the flowers a lovely nice shape and now I'm just going to stick them to the card and add a little bit of a sentiment and we will be done I will be back to show you hi so here's here is the card uh, made up I've just stamped again a sentiment um, in melon mambo and stamped a little background splattery thing the splatter stamp from the irresistible bloom set and then I've added the two flowers the curved flowers the leaves just flat on the the paper and um, I've added a little gem to the center of each flower so these are my ideas for using vellum so the first one is simply to use an embossing folder on vellum and either use it plain on a card or use it with a frame my second idea was to use an embossing folder but add to it by using um using an embossing tool like the end of the um piece from the the, uh, the end of the stylus <laughs> oops not sitting over the end of the stylus from our scoreboard uh, makes it does that really well you can also use that i haven't made this into a card but to show you, you could use that to just simply draw lines and decorate vellum just that way, emboss it that way. So three ways to use embossing there. Then I also showed you colouring techniques. I showed you embossing onto vellum using Versamark and embossing powder in white and then using our blends to colour behind. Um, moving them around a little bit with water, that's watercolour behind and um, just allowing those to to have a darker colour around the edge and uh, just come through the vellum and that makes a lovely card. You can simply colour a piece of vellum using our alcohol markers and move it around using alcohol just to smooth it out to provide a background for a card. And finally, we have our card with our coloured vellum. You can colour it yourself using dark colours, that works as well. This is the shimmer vellum from a, a pack some time ago and um, you can just see how it makes just beautiful flowers to put on the front of a card.
So I hope those give you some ideas of using vellum and I hope you have a go because it's great fun trying different things with vellum. Um, there are many more ideas out there, but uh, I hope you like these ones. Um, if you'd like my channel, please subscribe. If you want more information, please go to my uh, blog, which is at craftycarolscards.co.uk, where you can also sign up for my emails and find out what I'm up to and get my news each week. Um, do sign up for those. You get a free gift when you sign up. And I will see you again soon. Thank you for joining me. Bye for now.